Data collection can be time consuming, expensive, and honestly, boring. When our ability to collect data is limited, data augmentation can play an important role. It can help us build a more robust data set and increase the size of our training data. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. We're going to discuss the aim of data augmentation and its benefits. We'll then move on to some specific types of image augmentations, including flipping images, adjusting brightness, random color jitter, and adding random noise. To end, we'll discuss the best practices when it comes to augmenting images. That is, how to best validate our model and test it in production. So when doing augmentations, it's important to think critically. Any augmentations you do need to make sense for your particular application. To understand what I mean by this, we'll be working with a mini automated car. The car makes predictions using images from a camera on the front to help guide it around the orange track. Along the way, we'll discuss what augmentations make sense for this specific application. By the way, if you want the Python code for any of the methods you see here, make sure to check out the article linked in the description. It also goes into more detail on some of the topics we discuss here. Also, make sure to wait till the end of the video where I'll explain how you can get access to my Python SHAP course. Okay, before we get into that, it's worth discussing data collection. This is because augmentation can be seen as a supplementary or alternative approach to collecting a robust data set. A robust data set is one that reflects all the conditions under which a model is expected to perform in production. These conditions are determined by variables such as the lighting conditions, the angle of the camera, the color of the room, or objects in the background. Training on such a data set will produce a model that is resilient to changes in these variables. A good example comes from our experience with the automated car. We collected a data set, trained a model, deployed it, and it worked perfectly. That is until we opened up the blinds. The sun reflected off the track and confused the model. It was not able to make accurate predictions under these new conditions. Or in other words, the model was not robust to changes in the lighting conditions. Building a robust data set starts with a good data collection strategy. You need to think about all the variables that will affect conditions in production, and then collect data that captures variation in those variables. For different lighting conditions, we could turn lights on and off, open and close window blinds, or collect data during different times of the day. Really, what we're trying to do is introduce noise into the data set. This is to avoid the model overfitting to a certain set of conditions where it would only perform well underneath those conditions. But as I mentioned in the beginning, we are often limited by how much data we can collect. And this is where data augmentation comes in. It is when we systematically or randomly alter data using code allowing us to artificially introduce noise. Even if we've managed to collect a robust data set, this additional layer of noise can be beneficial. Augmentation also allows us to increase the size of our data set. This can be particularly useful for deep learning as it helps the model parameters converge. So let's move on to some examples of augmentations. The first one is flipping images. Suppose we collected a bunch of images in the anti-clockwise direction. I don't know <laughs> which way does the camera flip it. Anyways, we collect left turns only. If we wanted the car to be able to make right turns, we'd have to collect a bunch more images. Alternatively, we could flip all our images on the X axis or do horizontal flipping. This makes sense for our application as the track is symmetrical. Even if we did collect data in both directions, it would make sense to flip all the images as it allows us to double the size of our data set. But what about vertical flipping? For some applications, it may make sense, but for our automated car, not so much. Vertical flipping implies that the car will be driving on the ceiling, and this is definitely not a condition we would expect in production. We talked about collecting data under different lighting conditions. We can attempt to simulate these conditions using augmentations, that is by adjusting the brightness of the images. You can see how this could get similar results to turning the lights on and off. We can take these types of augmentations one step further 
using a random jitter. This will randomly alter the brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue of an image. We can also define the degree to which each of these aspects can vary. Again, we need to think about whether these augmentations make sense for our application. If we allowed the U to vary by too much, we would end up with images of tracks with different colors. But in production, our track would always be orange. We should also consider the limitations of these types of augmentations. They adjust the color of the entire image. But in reality, Lighting conditions are more complicated. Sunlight can reflect off the track at different angles, and some parts of the image could be darker than others. If you really want to capture this noise, you would have to do it with good data collection. Another approach to augmentation is to randomly introduce noise. This includes Gaussian noise, where we adjust each pixel by a value sampled from the normal distribution, or salt and pepper noise, where we randomly change some pixels to either black or white. In production, a model could be expected to make predictions on images of varying quality. Gaussian and salt and pepper noise aim to reduce the quality of our training images, making the model robust to these changes. Deletion is another way of introducing random noise. This works by deleting large chunks of the image. This can also help produce a more robust model, but in a different way to the previous two methods. When making predictions, a model could focus on a particular feature or aspect of the image. For example, our model could only use the outer orange lane to make predictions. By deleting large chunks, we force the model to use multiple features. You could also take a more systematic approach to deletion. Suppose an object such as a chair is in the background of all our training images. And as a result, the model associates this object with the prediction to turn right. We can try to break this association by deleting the chair in the background of some of our training images. Although, this process may be just as time consuming as going out and collecting new data. So we've seen different types of augmentations. We've also seen how we can vary the level of some of them. And really, both the type and level can be treated as hyperparameters when training your models. When evaluating the augmentations, it's important to keep three rules in mind. The first one is always do your train test split before augmenting your data. If we didn't, augmentations of the same image would end up in the different data sets. In other words, we would have very similar images in the training and testing split. This would lead to an overestimation of the model's performance. Rule number two is do not augment the test set at all. The test set is used to estimate the model's performance in production, and the model would not be expected to make predictions on augmented data. Rule number three is to remember that not all conditions are reflected in the test set. This is why we did data augmentation in the first place. The problem is that good performance on the test set will not necessarily mean good performance in production. This puts us in a tricky situation. And really, the only way to truly test augmentations is to test the model in the real world. But this can be time consuming and you probably won't be able to test in all environments. And so this brings us back to the point that you need to think critically about what augmentations are right for your application. There should be a good reason for including any augmentation and it should likely lead to a more robust model. But what do you think? Have I missed any important augmentations? What has been your experience with training models on augmented data? If you've made it this far, I take it you're very interested in machine learning. So you've probably heard of SHAP. It is the most powerful Python package for understanding and debugging your models. From the theory to application, my course will teach you everything you need to know to get started. And for a limited time, you can get free access if you sign up to the newsletter in the description.